Well, this morning I'm bringing up what I was going to teach on in the kids' time, okay? We were going to talk about Nam's healing, and I've expanded it a little bit, so I'll give you some meat to chew on, okay? And I think there's just some neat things I discovered as I was looking at the story. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to 2 Kings chapter 5, and we're going to be doing 1 through 14. Now, it's only kind of half of the story, but this is the part we're dealing with today, is where Nahum gets healed. I'm going to ask if you could use your imagination this morning and picture people across the platform here. And I'll tell you who they are, okay? Right now, there's nobody here because we haven't started yet, okay? We're about ready to add a character. The first character that we read about is Nahum. And we're going to put Nahum right in the center, right here. And can you picture him being kind of a big shot, proud, strong, all of that? Nahum, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and in high favor, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Now we take from the way that is. He wouldn't have been called to be this great man if he were a leper from childhood or something. So something kind of new, we assume. Because here he is, this commander, and now he is a leper. So going on with the story, it says, Now the Syrians, on one of their raids, had carried off a little girl from the land of Israel. Okay, now we've got a new character. Let's bring in the little girl. She's going to stand right there. Can you picture a little girl? Okay, here's the little girl. It says, they have carried off a little girl from the land of Israel, and she worked in service of Nahum's wife. Another character. Let's put Nahum's wife right here. Okay, now with the little girl, notice it said that the raiders had carried her off. Can you imagine being a child and being carried off into captivity to another land? Be pretty traumatic. I wouldn't want any of our kids to go through that. But this little girl now had gone through all that trauma. Here she is. She is in our story, in the Bible, and in this story. Okay, verse 3. The little girl said to her mistress, Would that my Lord, or with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Okay, now she told who? Okay, the little girl told, who did she tell? The wife, Nahum's wife. Now, it doesn't mention anything more about Nahum's wife, but we assume that since she talked to Nahum's wife, the wife told, yes, she told her husband, Nahum. So Nahum went in and told his Lord, thus and so, the little girl from the land of Israel. And, and so he laid the message. So we have Nahum's wife, doesn't say that she told, but we assume she did. And then he told who? The king of Syria. Thank you. So we got another character here. Let's make some room. We'll put him right here. Okay. Here's the king of Syria. And for sure he's a big shot. He's kind of the boss. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel. Okay, new character. Let's put this king right here. Okay, so we have this king. Did he talk to the prophet? I mean, the little girl didn't say anything about the king. She said, you know. But the king naturally goes, okay, we'll talk to the big shot. So he sends a letter with Nahum to the king of Israel. What is a king of Israel's reaction? Okay, well, we'll find out. When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you Nahum, my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. 
And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, I am a God to kill or to take a life that this man sends word for me to cure a man of his leprosy. Only consider and see how he is seeking a quarrel with me. So the king is getting all upset. In fact, he even what? He tore his clothes. That's a sign of great distress. He tore his clothes. Can you picture him doing that over here? Okay, picture the king ripping his clothes. Okay, that was a big help, wasn't it? <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> but anyway, he's going to, I guess he hadn't heard about the prophet or he forgot, I don't know. But anyway, it's interesting. Uh, then somebody else, and we don't, it doesn't say in the Bible, but we're, I'm thinking there's somebody that saw the king rip his clothes. And he went and told the prophet what the king did because the next one said, but when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, king saying, why have you torn your clothes? So there's a, somebody in here, we don't know his or her name, probably a he, right over here, okay? The witness to the king ripping his clothes, and he takes off and he tells Elijah, okay? The guy he should be talking to, that's smart. Okay, so there we go. Then Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king had torn his clothes, and he sent to the king, and I figure he's probably the same guy, saying, why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to now to me, that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Nahum came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger, and we got the next guy, well, actually, we better put Elijah in here, shouldn't we? Here's Elijah. Now, when I first remember we were going to be talking about this story, immediately I'm thinking, Nahum, Elijah, God. Well, we haven't even gotten to Elijah yet, so here's Elijah. Okay. Whoops. Don't throw things around. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, here's Elijah and... Nahum comes to his house with his horses and chariots. Now that would be like bringing your tanks, you know, the military guy, bringing all the good stuff. Uh, he's, he was outside Elijah's house. Now here is an interesting thing. Elijah sent a messenger, and I was just, I put the comment, he's a man of God and he didn't show off. <laughs> He sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh will be restored and you shall be clean. Okay, so he gave the message. And here's the messenger over here. Okay, we got him. All right. Now, the reaction, and of course this is one I think most of us remember. His reaction was, when he heard this, Nahum was angry and went away saying, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hands all over the place and cure the leper. Are not the Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away and went away in rage. Now, at this point, is he healed? No. If the story stopped there, would he be healed? No. What do you think, boys? If the story stopped there, would Nam be healed? No. No. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys what you're supposed to be drawing. If you can draw something about <laughs> this story, it would be wonderful. I'd love to put some up on our bulletin board. And by the way, please notice our bulletin board. We have uh, kids artwork out there and artwork is very special. It is pretty cool. So, <laughs> all right. Um, anyway, right now he's not healed. He's mad. He thought that Elijah should do some religious thing, right? He did not do anything religious. He didn't show off. He didn't even come outside the door. And some people might say, well, that was kind of rude. But I think that maybe God was telling him, 
staying in your house, send a messenger, I want something more to be done here. And so he followed God and did what God said. Now, the next characters. We're going to put them all across the front here. Okay? All these guys, bing, 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 bing. All these friends. <laughs> and it was his servants, but also his friends. Notice this on verse 13. But Nahum's servants came near and said to him, My father. I'm going to just put in an insert here. My father. They didn't say my master. Oh, or, you know, or any of that. They said, my father. That tells me that Nahum's servants thought very highly of him. They revered him as a dad figure, which is pretty special. My father. I thought that was so neat. That tells a little bit more about who Nahum was, too, which is kind of neat. Okay, so the rest of the story is, my father, it is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, wash and be clean? They said, hey, there's good news here. Get the good news. Get over your idea of how religious it needs to be and just grab a hold of that good news. The good news is if you do what the prophet says, you're going to get healed. Well, as you can see, Nahum, he didn't keep being all proud and arrogant and damn. He went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the fresh flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Lepers were held at arm's length by a long ways. It wasn't six foot social distance. It was like, if you heard there's a lever around, you got out of the way and you went away. So I think just even knowing that, that these people were still working with him, helping him, being a blessing to him, really speaks highly of all the characters that we've seen across the platform here. Now, can you picture Dirty River Jordan, this guy, big proud, all dressed in his gear, Goes down into the water one time, comes up all wet. He goes down again, comes up. Can you think that maybe he might be going, this is stupid. <laughs> you think he would think that? Then he goes down again. <sighs> and he goes down again. <sighs> this is ridiculous. But did he stop? No, he kept going. He dipped seven times. I think it's interesting that God had him dip seven times instead of one. Could have God just said, just be clean? He could have, but he wanted him to do something to connect his faith to God. And so he did it. And he did the whole thing, all seven dippings. And here's the neat thing, too. He didn't just take away the leprosy. He made him youthful. You know, he restored the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. So even better than a man of his age. He was made clean and his skin was youthful. So when we think of this story now, picture all these people. Okay, we've got two rows of people. Who was responsible for Nahum's healing? Everybody. Everybody had a part. Now, did God heal him? Boys, did God heal him? Did God heal him? Was it God or did his dipping in water really do it? Or was it God that did it? God, yes. So we have God in here, too. Now, I'm not going to put him in a character here. We're just going to go like that, okay? So God's the one that did it. But God used all these people. And I just want to mention, now, now, kids, I want you to hear this real loud and clear. Who was the first one that got this ball rolling? Who was the first one? Who's the first character? 
that got them started. The very first character, here's Nam, and then there was one person, whoops, over here. A little girl. Thank you, a little girl. So I think that's important for kids to know. You guys have power in that you bless people. You can pass on the good word, yeah? Even when you're not paying attention. <laughs> I know a lot of stuff gets in here. I remember as a kid, I'd be drawn away in church, and then later I think about something the pastor said. Even though I looked like I wasn't paying any attention, I was paying attention. My brain was still working even though I was doing this. So that's good. Um, so the little girl started the whole thing. This little girl. Now here's another thing about that little girl. We talked about how she was went through this traumatic experience. If you had gone through that, might you have been fearful? Or mad? Or bitter? Was she? Was she bitter? So what, if she were bitter, would she tell her mistress, oh, would that my Lord would the, have the prophet who was in Samaria, would that he be there so he could be healed? Does that sound like somebody who's bitter? No, she's thinking about her current situation. And so this is for everybody now. No matter what you go through, God is not done with you. There's something he will use you for right where you are right now. So whether you're a child or an older person like some of these other people here, God can use all of us. And everyone, in fact, I was originally thinking to call this message, instead of who helped Nahum to get healed, I was thinking about calling it, everyone has a part. But that would be my footnote. Everyone has a part. Now picture, if any one of those people had not responded, would Nahum been healed? No. Let's think about it. Little girl, she had to start it, right? She told who? The wife. What did she do? <coughs> she shared it with her husband. Now what if she hadn't shared that? That the end right there. She shared simple little thing. Just mention it to her husband. Okay, and if you picture all these different people, the king of Syria, he could have said, I'm too important, don't bother me. But he didn't. The king of Israel. Well, at least he tore his clothes. That was something, you know. <laughs> So the tearing of his clothes told the person that was watching, go talk to Elisha, which he did. So even that was something that God used. How about those witnesses or those helpers, servants of Nahum? What if we got clear to the end of the story after Nahum got mad and he says, I thought he was going to do this religious thing. I'm mad. I'm going home. Mm -hmm. Would he have been healed? No. No. But all these friends here, servants or friends, came and said, here's the good news. Don't throw it away. Here's the good news. Can you relate to that? Sometimes just a little mention you have, so if somebody's going through a struggle, and you can tell them there's good news. And they may even appear angry. <clears throat> he did. But they didn't give up on him. They cared so much for him, they said, come on now, there's good news. Just do it. Just do it. Do the ridiculous. The ridiculous might be, give your life to Jesus. The ridiculous might be, but that's too simple. It should be more to it than that. There should be all this. No, just give your heart to the Lord and turn to him. Follow him. And that is good news. God is in the whole thing. So all these different people, I don't think they did it on their own. I think God kind of nudged the little girl to share it. Nudged the wife to share it with her husband. And so on and so forth. I think God was in it all. And because of it, Nahum received his healing. 
Now there's more, another story after this, which we're not gonna get into because I really want this to be the thrust of the message today, is we all have a part. So kids, do you have a part to play in the kingdom of God right now? Can you help? Can you share with people? Can you tell your friends about the Lord? Yes. Yeah, I see some heads. Yes. <laughs> you have a part. What you do, you may share something now. My uh, husband talks about his cousin Larry a lot. They were best friends growing up. And he said, he didn't even know this. He said, years later, his cousin came to me and said, Wally, well, you know, the reason why I got saved was because of you. And he goes, what? And he said, yeah, you told me about how you didn't want to go to hell, so you got saved. <laughs> and Larry thought, you know, that's a good idea. So he got saved. Anyway, just a little thing where he just talked to his cousin. He didn't know that it made a difference, but Larry remembered it and shared with him later. So little things you say might even be just an encouragement with someone's growth. For people that are already Christians, do they need encouragement sometimes? Yes. Okay, let's see a show of hands. I'm going to have everybody tell me. Do you ever need encouragement? Ever? You're a Christian. Do you ever need encouragement? Yes. I've got some hands going up. Now, some of you aren't raising your hands. I don't know if you aren't hearing me or <laughs> if you are just so well adjusted. But let me just say, there will come a time when you will need encouragement. So just keep that in mind. Be an encourager. Pay it forward. Be an encourager. And others will indeed be encouraging you. And I think all of us can testify to when you have been encouraged by other people. So we all have a part, right? Is that right? How about Andy? Do you have a part? You don't? I think you do. <laughs> don't worry, you'll find out. You will. Yeah. So that is awesome. Anyway, the main thrust of the story, I think we've gotten not just that Nahum got healed. And healing's important, believe me. We are praying for miracles, we are believing for healing. And the reason why we pray for healing is because we care about people. Right, kids? That's why we pray for people. That's why we want the gift of healing and miracles, because we care about people. So when those requests come through, we pray and we know God is making a difference through one person. Right? all these individuals we are a part of that so thank you for responding and listening so carefully that is awesome i will look forward to seeing some of the pictures that we have today so make sure you put your names on the front so i can put them on the bulletin board. all right let's pray father we just thank you that you have given us such a valuable important task to be alive on this earth and Lord we may seem like just a little girl we may seem like a lovely servant we may seem like nobody at all where we're not even mentioned but we have a part in what you are doing right now thank you God we give you our lives and say yes Lord we are following you and we do want to serve you with every part of our being so Lord use us help us use us through prayer use us through what we say use us from every uh, a bit of who we are and we give it to you Lord thank you for all you are doing in Jesus name amen